you can see right now he's struggling in real time to try and justify why exactly they would do these strange conflicting things and why they would have an ideology that promotes that but you could you can tell like just just look at what's happening in this last couple this last little paragraph is quite telling we'll slow it down for the for the instant replay in a marginalized community but they don't care Trump ordered the Office of Management and Budget to cancel all critical race theory trainings and white privilege trainings, calling it a sickness in our country. For those that aren't familiar with these terms, they are a major component of the leftist identitarian ideology. They believe that all white people are inherently racist. Only white people can be racist. And they believe that certain concepts like hard work, saving for the future, and even scheduling are components of whiteness. In my opinion, this is... Well, I guess we all know the truth now. Everybody's been, been well informed, I hope. You've, you've all learned. You've learned about your, your whiteness. And scheduling. Schedule, that, that's always been a, a component of systemic racism. Whether or not you can schedule an appointment, whether or not you're going to be available to, to get to a meeting. Of course, yes, it's, it's all part of the same. It's a tapestry, all right? Being on the left is weird. It's confusing. There's so much id poll, we don't even know what we're doing half the time. Who am I? What am I? I have to identify. Overtly white supremacist. But this ideology has become increasingly pervasive. And even though Donald Trump is making this move, I am not convinced we will see the end of it just because of this. In fact, it shouldn't have even gotten into government in the first place. Leftist identitarianism and critical race theory are also major components of the Black Lives Matter riots. The reason people are going around screaming that this country- Whoa, whoa. So it's not even a movement anymore. It's not a protest. It's just by definition, riots. Tree is racist and that police are racist is not because they believe these individuals are prejudiced against other people based on race. It's because they believe concepts like policing, concepts, like I said, scheduling, are inherently white supremacist. Hmm. They've changed the definitions of these words. And this ideology, or non-theistic religion as some refer to it, is wow. spreading dangerously fast. While this may be a victory, this is still just a counter move, and things may get worse before they get better. In fact, even though Donald Trump is canceling these things, they still have contracts that must be fulfilled. So Trump has said to the legal extent that we can shut it all down. Now, many on the left and many in media are saying, what? What? Who's teaching people this? It's not real. It doesn't exist. But it does. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's almost as if you're making up a bunch of strange things and conflating them with some very serious topics. It's almost as if, like, if we want to talk about scheduling in the same conversation that we're talking about systemic racism, it, it might dilute it. You, you could be poisoning the well. And it might make some of it sound utterly ridiculous. But, I mean, that's not like you have an agenda that you're trying to push when you're doing all this, of course. And I have several examples for you. In one instance, scientists were ordered to like write letters to marginalized people saying they are racist. And they have these people do these creepy struggle sessions where they public. Wait, wait, citation, please. I would love. When did that happen? How many scientists? How many letters? Was it just to all white people? And what kind of scientists? Did, did, did it matter? Did their specialization matter? Like, you know, there's, there's a lot of like. Scientist sounds a little bit more nebulous than you're making it. I, I, I mean, did, <laughs> was there like an obstetrician? Were they like, oh, yes, and by the way, uh, you're, you're racist. I, I'm just trying to book an appointment. No, no, I know, I know. But you're racist. And I have to tell you that. It's, it's the law. Trump has said that I have to write a letter and tell you that you're, you're racist. ...quickly announce they're racist, even if they aren't, because the definitions are changing. For me, this is one of the most important issues of 2020 and for our country. So, um, you know, uh, global warming. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, incredible amounts of poverty. Yeah. Uh, 60,000 homeless veterans. But critical race theory. That's the most important topic du jour for Mr. Tim Pool. And you know what? That one, I think that's the most honest he's ever been. That That's probably 100% true. Like, I, I, I believe you. 
based on my background, I am adamantly opposed to this left wing white supremacist ideology where they think every good thing that we've created came from white people, which is just not true. So uh, jokes aside, what's really important right now is check out the language that Tim Pool is using. And the reason I want to point this out is because, again, Tim Pool gets like 60,000 live viewers. A lot of people listen to him. He's one of the biggest voices on the right. And uh, for him to be saying sentences like far leftist white supremacist ideology, he's now trying to associate that with leftist ideology. And they're trying to corrupt. They have been for a long time, but now it's, it's very blatant in, in the way that they're enforcing this true and it needs to be shut down. This is one move that I appreciate. I am glad Trump is making this move, but we must do more to better understand what's going on. Let's read the news and I'm going to give you a, a, a simple breakdown of what critical race theory is, because although many people understand the concept of leftist authoritarian identitarianism, they're actually well, I mean, they, they do based on what you've told them. You know, go off, King. Actually, know what it is. And I know already the language is getting particularly confusing. Lots of jargon. <laughs> Why identitarianism could that be? <laughs> typically refers to government policy or law based on identity. And that's what the left is doing. Identity, of course, being your race, your gender, your immutable characteristics. Many of these people use purposefully verbose language to make it extremely difficult to understand. And that's something we can break down right now. And I'll show you exactly what's going on and why it is imperative. Trump continues. I mean, verbose isn't really that far out there, but I mean, he could if he was if he was trying to speak like to the unwashed masses, he, he could have been like, you know, using big words, using them big words for the learny learns, you know, to go on the offensive against these creepy cultists. Before we get started, however, head over to TimCast.com. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you have Bitcoin you want to burn, everybody? Is, is Bitcoin burning a hole in your cyber wallet? Well, just give it away to a man who definitely needs it. Theory. And why is it in our government and what's being done about it? In this memo, we can see it says. Okay, so basically he's going to read out the fact that, yes, Donald Trump has made this decision. But I'd love to learn what Tim Pool thinks about critical race theory building thing called whiteness and they don't they, they don't talk about whiteness as in your skin color they kind of do but they've basically created this idea that if I'm anyone confused. acts a certain way they are acting white they mm. believe that time the concept of time itself is racist that oh. scheduling your work is racist oh they believe that working hard is racist and they what? believe that saving for your future is also racist Holy this shit. is what Trump is stopping, and I am okay. not trying to exaggerate. No, no, not at all. So basically, it's the philosophy of... Clean up your room. Clean up your room. Clean up your room. When it comes to the serious business of sex, clean up your room. It's the testosterone-laden man. So uh, ultimately, yeah, that's, that's racist. That's racist ideology. If, if, you're, if you're trying to pick yourself up from your bootstraps... If you're trying to work hard, if you're going to clean up your room, then, uh, you know, the, you might be uh, enabling the white race. Right. National nuclear labs. Employ Man, time is racist. That would have made for some weird old uh, true detective episodes, eh? Like times a flat circle and it's hella racist, you know. Sometimes I wonder whether or not it's a concentric circle or a flat plane. And I also wonder about the Jewish question sent to a seminar that claimed rugged individualism and hard work are white male culture. Hmm. The seminar for Sandia Labs executives also involved writing apology letters to marginalized people. From Reason, the National Museum of African American History and Culture in D.C. found itself in a small scandal last month after visitors to its website discovered an infographic that listed hard work and rational thought as traits of white culture. The crude stereotypes drew well-deserved derision. Right. These people believe that white individuals from Europe created basically everything we do, which is insane considering people all over the world know how to do math, to time things, how to uh, even uh, uh, calculate the circumference of the earth. These were not the requirements of, of European settlers coming in and bringing knowledge. Asia, Asia developed a ton of technologies. These people are inherently racist and, in my opinion, indoctrinated into a paranoid delusional state. 
They go on. A- this is kind of neat, though. We like, excuse me. We've made a really big jump, a really big leap, because there's a huge problem. I'm sure people here have heard the expression "decolonize the curriculum," as in a lot of the things that we're taught in both uh, Western media, Western curriculums, Western school systems. They're usually taught from a Eurocentric point of view, in which you know Judeo-Christian values are the reasons we have so many blessed and amazing things. You can see before you all that. Look, look at the splendor. Do you see? Do you see this? This would not be possible were it not for Judeo-Christian values. This, this right here. So it, it's a wonderful thing. But now now we've kind of twisted that. And now now that is the tool of the racist. And they're being used to indoctrinate you in the opposite direction. So interesting. I want to say, it's not just the museum. Last year, Sandia National Laboratories, a federal contractor responsible for building the U.S.'s nuclear weapons, sent its executives to mandatory diversity training with the White Men's Caucus on Eliminating Racism, Sexism, and Homophobia in Organizations. This group's educational materials, which were obtained by Christopher Rufo, the problems that we're seeing, like this Sandia Labs, where they're telling people all of these things are whiteness, are not isolated to just Sandia Labs. Many on the left are saying, please give me examples of this. Well, I can... (laughs) Yeah, I mean, people are probably off until a new citation needed. Uh, but that's interesting. There's a lot of jumps. And if you make enough jumps, you might start correlating things. Like, if you want to obfuscate the fact that Donald Trump has been eroding the rights of members of the LGBTQ community, uh, members, uh, any anyone who happens to be non-white in America, basically, uh, through a whole bunch of different uh, regulations, deregulations, all that kind of stuff, uh, not to mention, you know, very, very racist policies such as... Uh, being able to fly from other countries that happen to be a Muslim majority. Uh, but uh, again, it's it's because they're they're problematic. We, we have to remember that. But then if you conflate that with uh, this California Proposition 16 repeal, suddenly you start to paint this new narrative and, and it becomes very striking to people who are watching you. It's like, wait, it, Democrats bad. They're doing the bad thing. And, and, but then Republicans good. They're, they're trying to do the good thing. But but, but racism is bad. But it's it's the left who are racist. But it, it's the left who, who are actually... Who are the white supremacists? It okay. Well, now everything makes sense. Like the whole Tim Pool manifesto is starting to come down. I believe color blindness, color blindness, which means not judging someone based on the color of their skin, is covert white supremacy. That's what was being sent out by the army. Now this resulted in, in uh, an investigation. They said the army Wednesday night announced it has launched an investigation into how a presentation on racism and discrimination included a handout suggesting Donald Trump's campaign slogan, MAGA, is considered covert white supremacy. The investigation was launched after a campaign from an Alabama congressman. Now, it is freaky that they're Mm -hmm. trying to target a political slogan, make America great again. What does that have to do with anything? You could make America great again because America was great in many ways. In many ways, we lost that. In fact, hmm. based on their own argument that they're... Tra- so, I mean, uh, I don't want to get into the actual definitions of fascism, but if you were hearkening back to a mythical time, a time in which uh, you want to return to, and then you start to base an ideology around that, and then you start to find a common enemy, say, in the other, and then you start to associate the two with far-right ideology, uh, you might have yourself... ...trying to repeal civil rights law. You could argue that repealing civil rights law would make America great again, to them at least, right? I mean, think about it. But they think the slogan itself is covert white supremacy. This is the military using the ideology to attack a political campaign. Many wondered if this was a violation of the Hatch Act, because Hmm. the, the government, the federal government, is not supposed to be distributing partisan propaganda. But here it is. This whole list is is absolutely insane. They say being a white ally, a self-appointed white ally is white supremacy. They say police brutality is white supremacy, but police brutality can affect anybody. They say (laughs) fetishizing black indigenous people of color. I mean, apply that law to everything, right? (laughs) Well, I mean, yeah, that that was racist what happened to those black people, but that could happen to white people too. I mean, it can happen to anyone. It doesn't matter how much or how often it's happening or how frequently, but just, just know that anyone could experience it. Is covert white supremacy the best one on you. Or you'd look at testimonials. Judging them based on the color of their skin is meaningless and a horrible waste of time. Who who had MLK quote within the first, uh, let's say, 20 minutes? Oh, you missed it. Who had MLK quote? Because you missed it. We're we're at 20 minutes and 45 seconds. I've been jumping around, but yeah. ah, So close. So close. I'm Take a look at the work. Oh, you had Avengers quote. Yeah. I mean, we could have missed an Avengers quote. There, there could have been like six already. I, I might have skipped over it. 
you know the holocaust also targeted gay people so totally not about the jews uh yeah exactly that's that, that would be the ultimate whataboutism right i mean it, it targeted everyone that they considered inferior they've done discrimination telling us outright and overtly judge people based on their race and there it is he says if discrimination is creating inequity it's racist but if it's creating equity it is anti-racist this is just semantics discriminating against someone based on their race is bad whether it's positive or negative than everyone else to get on the on the SATs to get into college so that is specifically targeting a marginalized community, but they don't care. They just want to discriminate, to create some kind of weird, out of digitized, balkanized society. I don't know how to- it's, it's tough because when you're inventing a fantasy, which is what Tim Pool is doing, it can get a bit confusing. And so that's, you can see right now he's struggling in real time to try and justify why exactly they would do these strange conflicting things and why they would have an ideology that promotes that. But you can, you can tell, like, just, just look at what's happening in this last couple, this last little paragraph is quite telling. We'll slow it down for the, for the instant replay. In a marginalized community, but they don't care. They just want to discriminate. To create some kind of weird, I don't know, digitized, uh, balkanized society. I don't know how else to put it. The, the idea being that everyone's got to be packaged in neat little boxes and they can't intermingle. That's horrifying. Trump is doing the opposite of that. His memo says we want He's people bringing us working together. together of all races. Trump, Trump is debalkanizing us. To be equals. Us. Yeah. It's and great. that's... To be equals. Well, that's the future I like. Why? Oh. Well, because of progressive ideology, because of... People like Bernie Sanders, mm -hmm. who fought for civil rights back in the 60s, I actually exist. Oh. And a lot of people know this because I bring it up, but this is particularly important to me, and it's a reason why I'm voting for Trump. <laughs> what? <laughs> Story checks out. Yeah, I mean, no, that's, that's, that's ironclad for sure. For sure. Absolutely. Hmm. Um, I do want to say though, because there's 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 a few people watching, to the to the four hundred people watching, uh, especially to to the, you know, uh, fellow whites or, you know, people who might be like me, white passing and, and what have you, um, white people get get a lot of a lot of shit. And uh, I agree with Tim Pool there. There there's there's definitely a lot of a lot of criticism against against white folk. And uh, you know, uh, at the end of the day, there's absolutely no problem, no problem at all in uh, in being white. In fact, uh, being you know Scottish, British, Irish, um, any of the the wonderful lands of of the white people, um, that's 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 a beautiful thing. And it's also a beautiful thing to to take pride in, in being from those places. It just it gets weird uh, when you take pride in in just being white, like white white, like in the idea of whiteness that's so when people are like we want to kind of get get rid of that they're usually talking about the fact that like you know race is a social construct we invented the idea of the white race uh so so if you want to take pride in in like an ideology that we've invented then it gets then it gets weird so so don't do that one don't don't do don't do what tim pool i suppose is trying to strangely encourage people to do but hey especially uh, you know, white people who are on board with helping destroy these unjust hierarchies, white people who are on board with supporting Black Lives Matter movements, uh, y'all are based as fuck. And, uh, you know, all the great things that are happening will need a strong allyship, a beautiful, multicultural, multi-ethnic, multicolorful union of beautiful comrades, delicious, happy, smiling, consensually hugging and, and rubbing and it's going to be a beautiful thing, everybody. We're, we're going to do it.
This is an ad campaign. Conservatives are always honest about their genitalia. Justin Trudeau wants us to believe he has a massive penis. Justin Trudeau, just not big enough. <laughs> Straight up, that's some. Sh that's you know the funny thing is, this is the world we live in now, where like I wouldn't put any of this past reality anymore. <laughs> they always have to end it like that too. Justin Trudeau, just not big enough. Hey, we want to mutual aid you to get some eyeballs on your work. So if you have a leftist YouTube channel or Twitch stream or something you want us to advertise, just send us a 20 to 30 second ad using the forms at wearesurfs.com. We'll do our best to help you out. And please submit once per channel. To our God, I'm Wrath. We pray at your altar of greatness. To our monarch, Thomas Bone, you are the light that guides our path. To our lords, Jeffrey Lamb, Trevor R., Stephen, Nine Tails Cosmic Fox, Hans Josephin, and Poppy Nelson, we bow meekly for your pleasure. To our knights of the round table, Josh Mickelson, Dylan Bythe, Alexander Thaler, Zach Christensen, Todd Buckingham, Todd Lajeunesse, Clement Chetska, Sky Bear Games, Moss Beast, Political Puppy, Ali Menthol, Jimmy Big Nuts, Alan R, Andreas Chitoro, Good Poon Hates Cops, That's Solid Poon Then, Dr. Zayas, Joppy, Radaclu, Violent Orchard, and Sophie Baby, we salute you. And to our many merchants and farmers, thank you. Fuck you, Lance.